Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are here with us today. It's a special day that we honor them throughout our, our nation, and we want to do that today. Most importantly, we've come together to honor the Lord and looking forward to what He's going to do uh, throughout this service day. Hope you've come with your cup turned up, ready just to be filled by the Holy Spirit today. If you would, bow with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord and Heavenly Fathers, we come to you today. We just thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for watching over us and affording us again just another opportunity that we can gather together with our friends, with our family, with loved ones around us, and just be able to come together to worship you. Lord, we pray that we might do that today, that we might just lift up your name, that we might honor you, glorify you. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit just might move amongst us, reveal to us that which we need to see, help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear, and most importantly, a heart to receive that which you have for us today. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we ask this and we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. As, as Matt's coming and remain standing, one other thing I'll make mention today. If you're a guest here, in the, in the back of the pews in front of you, you'll see one of these cards. If you don't mind, fill out as much as you feel comfortable. And if you'll drop that by the desk out the left side of the sanctuary on your way out, we have a gift we would like to share with you today as you leave. Oldie but a goodie, victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. cleansing flood I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see and then I cried dear Jesus come and heal my broken spirit and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he is built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood 
Today we're continuing in the series that we started last week in Hebrews chapter 11 and, and looking at this passage and different parts of this passage that we consider that we call the heroes of faith or the hall of faith a lot of times, but we're looking at it from a little bit different aspect and we're looking at it uh, in, in light of who these people were before and who they became. And if you were here for Sunday school this morning, you're going to have a serious uh, dose of, of uh, the story of a certain couple, uh, I would say young couple, they weren't that young in, in this story. And we're going to be talking today uh, about probably one of the most famous uh, mothers in, in Scripture. Whenever you think in the Scripture, there's all kinds of, of mothers that, that we might think of, especially in the Old Testament, obviously starting with Eve and uh, Rachel and Leah and Hannah and, and all these different ones. The most famous one, Debbie just sang about Mary, the mother of, of Christ, and talked about her experience. But probably to the readers of Hebrews, the, the letter that was sent to the, to the Jewish believers, Sarah or as, as she's called at the beginning, Sarai, is, is probably the most well-known. Even more so than Mary to most of them, because it would have been someone they had heard about from very early on in their age. And, and, and today we'll, we'll touch into Hebrews chapter 11 in, in a few moments, but we're going to actually go back like we did last week and go back to Genesis and y'all just keep up with me. If you just want to turn to Hebrews 11, we'll end there at Hebrews 11, verses 11 and 12 in a little bit. But I'm going to actually start back in Genesis 16 and read a few verses because this, this lady that we would come to know as uh, Sarah, she didn't start out this uh, beacon of faith that she ends as. And today we're going to look at, 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 like I say, a few things in the life of Sarah and also Abraham. Genesis 16, verses 1 through 4, start out this way. It says, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had bore him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. And then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to, be, to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. See, in, if we understand the, the scripture and we go back and look, the Lord had, had made a promise to Abraham to Abram, as he's, as he's called here at the start, to Abram and, and, and Sarah, that they would have children and that the, their descendants would be, as, as Michael made note of it this morning, one, one place it tells him that it would be as the dust of the earth or the sands of the earth. And then in another place it tells us just immediately before this that his descendants would be as the stars in the sky. It would be innumerable how many descendants that he would have. But, but as we get into this passage here, the Lord had given them this promise and, and nothing had taken place. And it tells us that now they have this problem that seems insurmountable. This problem seems insurmountable and Sarah had not been able to have children. So that kind of leads us to our first point about faith. And, and, and we see when we look at the, the life of, of Sarah here, this faltering faith. She has a, a faltering faith. It's, it's one that's a struggle. And here as we read in this scripture, it tells us as she 
recognizes this problem. She's advanced in years now and has not been able to have children. And, and if you notice, when she goes to Abraham and tries to come up with her own solution, before she does that, notice where that she goes with the blame. She says that the Lord has restrained her from being able to have children. She, she blamed God for her circumstances. And, and it's really easy for us to do that. Sometimes when we don't get what we want, when life doesn't turn out the way that we had planned, a lot of times what we do is we first thing say, God, why haven't you done this? Why did you prevent this from taking place? Now, obviously, God can intervene. He can answer our prayers, but sometimes he answers our prayers. They're just not the way that we want him to or in the time that he wants him to, we want him to. And, and then we put blame on him. And, and, and it shows us a, a really strong issue, a, a, this struggle, this, this falter of her faith that's taking place, and it's reminded to us by Solomon as he's writing the book of Proverbs. He, he says many things in talking about our direction. And one of the things he says there, he says there is a way that seems right to man, but its end is death. A, a lot of times we decide to take the situation into our own hands and come up with our own solutions, but, but when we do that without God's leading and without direction, it tells us that it can bring upon us great struggle, great troubles, and even to the point of death. And here we see Sarah decide she comes up with this plan. She couldn't have children the way that she wanted and the way that she thought she should. So she comes to her husband, she comes to Abram, and she says... All right, here's a solution. Take my handmaiden and take her as your wife also. And now he would have these two wives, something that God never intended for him to have at the start, which starts a trend in Israel that isn't broken for many, many years that causes problems. And then to have a child with her. And then what we see in those verses that we just read is then Abraham, Abram, he does that. And as he does that, they go through with her plan. And then even whenever they go through with her plan, what happens? When they carry out her own plan, she becomes angry. It says that she despised Hagar and this child after, after she had this child. She was jealous of her. She was jealous that she provided something that she wasn't able to provide. And in doing that, we see this progression of sin. This taking control, taking the lordship of our life, saying, Lord, you know what? You haven't dealt with it, so we're going to deal with it. And then it turns into anger. It turns into hatred. It turns into wrath in so much that it tells us that she deals harshly with her. That she's abusive to Hagar, and Hagar and the baby, they, they run away at first. And, and then, if you go on down in the Scripture, there's a couple other verses there in this chapter I want to take note of. Because it may not be as reflective upon Mother's Day, but it's still a reminder for the time in which we live. Because we see this stuff lived out before us even today, and so many people don't understand this. But we see the prophecy that comes with this. It tells us that an angel of the Lord comes and appears to Hagar. And, and, and the angel tells her these words in verse 11 and 12. It says, And the angel of the Lord said to her, to Hagar, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction." And he shall be a wild man, and his, hand, and his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And whenever the, the Lord shares this message through his angel to, to Hagar about what's to take place, you might think it's talking about the immediate. It was talking a little bit about the immediate, but it was more talking about what was to come for years on. And here's a reminder to us. 
when our faith falters, whenever our faith struggles and we start to act in place of allowing the Lord to have control in our lives, it comes with consequences. And we see this progression of sin come to a head here and the consequences of it and the consequences of Sarah's actions in that day thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago still affect us to this very day. It tells us that there would be this great division. God had still promised Abraham and Sarah this great nation, this nation that would be blessed by him. But he also provides provision because of their mistake. And in this provision, Ishmael would raise up a a, a great nation as well in, in number. And this great nation would, would be at war with not only God's people, but it says everybody, every man. And if we look around us today, we see the confusion in the world in which we live. We see these protests and all this nonsense that's taking place. This stuff is being lived out still before our eyes thousands and thousands and thousands of years later. And listen to me, no president or peace treaty is going to stop it. it. It tells us there's going to be no end to it. This is a never-ending battle. This same, this same battle that we see waging in the Middle East today, it says it's, going to, it's not going to end until the Lord ultimately stops all war. That, that's when this will end. So we see this faltering faith, this struggling faith. And today, you know what? You might be here and you might say, you know what? That sounds like me. My faith is, is, is waning. It's, it's struggling. And, and, and you might say, I'm broken. You might look at yourself and say, you know what? I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not of use to God. But see, that's not the end of the story. We know that this same lady that's struggling now is going to eventually get to a place where she can be used mighty by God, but it doesn't happen immediately. If we skip on just a couple chapters later, in chapter 18, it goes on and it touches on, and I'm not going to spend much time on it, but there's several verses I want to read here that talks about this fragile faith she has. Sarah is still struggling and and now it tells us that at 86 years old Ishmael is born to Abraham and Hagar and and time passed and then whenever it was he was 99 years old when Abraham was 99 years old that the Lord reaffirmed his promise and that's when he changed their names to Abraham and to Sarah And, and 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 we see he, he gives this declaration here in verse 9 through 15 of chapter 18 of the book of Genesis. It goes on, it says, And then they said to him, and this is the, the Lord here appearing to Abraham, and he has with him two angels. It says, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. It says, now Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. And Sarah had, had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, after, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also old. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Surely I shall bear a child since I am old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for, I, for she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. See, we, we see her going from this, this faltering faith to now this fragile faith. And, and after the Lord has, has promised this, and he has reaffirmed his promise multiple times to Abraham, now 
They're, he's saying to them, at, at the ripe old age of 100 years old, Abraham, you're going to be a father to this promised child. And Sarah, she'll be 90 years old when she would have this promised son that they were to name Isaac. But in that message that they even hear then, we see doubt start to creep in. We see doubt start to creep in because Sarah's faith is still very fragile. She's still struggling with what she feels like she hasn't been able to do. And listen to me today. Some of us have, have struggled in different areas. Some have struggled in this very area, in fertility or in other areas. And, and, and you know what we do a lot of times? We look at ourselves and we say we're broken, but we forget we're the creation of our Heavenly Father. He's created us the way He has with a purpose and with a plan. And we don't need to look at ourselves and say that we're broken because of who He's created us to be. Now when sin creeps in and things creep in, then we may have problems that need to fix. But here we see that in her situation, she hears this great promise and what happens? She starts to doubt. And doubt creeps in. And, and it's easy to rationalize her lack of faith to say, you know what, that doesn't make sense that this 90-year-old woman would have a child. But when doubt starts to creep in, doubt opens the door for Satan to work. That, that's what happens. And, and it tells us that when, when Satan started to work, when doubt crept in, then what did it turn into after that? It turned into her lying. And we see her denial. And it says that she laughed within herself. Nobody could hear. She's hiding on the back side of the door. And she laughs and she's like, yeah, right. This is really going to happen? But if you notice, the Lord speaks back to Abraham. And he says, why did Sarah laugh? Now, I don't know what's going through Abraham's mind because Abraham can't hear it. But the Lord says, you know, she's done this. She's doubted. And, and then whenever she's confronted about it, well, she say, no, I didn't do that. Because she's afraid. We see a multitude of things take place. When our faith falters, when our faith is fragile, doubt starts to creep in. It, it turns into, a lot of times, we can allow that to affect us and it can turn into sin. And then it can turn into this denial, but because fear starts to creep in. But, but you know what this does point out to us that's encouraging, even though it might not feel encouraging in the moment? The, the Lord knows our thoughts. He, he knows your struggle. There, there's nothing here, no one here today, that the Lord doesn't know what's going on deep within your core, more than your spouse knows, more than your children know, more than your parents know, more than anything else, He knows deep down inside of us where we're at. And you know what? The Lord, the Lord confronts her about her sin. But you know what He doesn't do? He doesn't take away His promise. And that's what the Lord does to us. Whenever the Lord looks at us and He sees us and we're broken, and we've got faults, and we've got sin. And the Lord looks at us, and He even knows deep down in our core where we are and where we've been, what we're going through. This thing that we call conviction, that's what it is. It's a, it's a confrontation of sin. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It shows us that we're not where we need to be. But He doesn't remove His promise. The promise is still there awaiting us. This promise of, of, of Abraham and Sarah, this promise of this son Isaac, and this promise that was given to them of they would inherit this, their, their, their lineage would have this promised land. It's, it's, it's a, almost a mirror image of what God's done for us. He promised that he would send one who would lead us to the promised land. He, he did that. He fulfilled that promise by sending His Son, Jesus Christ, through these two frail, feeble parents, through their lineage, so that He could make a way. Jesus made it really clear. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man comes to the Father but by me. It's not going to be by our deeds. It's not going to be by keeping the law. It's not going to be by doing all the right things. It's not going to be because of any religious action that it comes through him. So we see this, this, this broken woman. Now when we, when we skip back over to the book of Hebrews chapter 11, on kind of really our focus scripture this week, it says this in verses 11 and 12. It says, by faith, Sarah herself also received strength to, con- to conceive seed, and, bore, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky, in multitude innumerable, as the sand which is by the seashore. It it says a couple of things there. First thing it addresses is this reality of faith. This isn't something that most of us like to hear. But whenever we talk about this, this faith that she had, it was forged. It was a forged faith. It was something that, that was built over time. And, and, and the reality of her faith, it talks about that she had to be patient. How many of us like to be patient? Now, no, no hands are going up. We don't like that. We don't like to be told to wait. Humanity never has, but we live in this day and age of instant gratification now where we say, well, we want it and we want it now and we think we deserve it and all these other crazy notions, and we don't like it. And so many times I hear people say, well, don't pray for patience. Listen to me today. Hear hear me today. You need to pray for patience. People say, don't pray for patience. Then the Lord is going to present something that's going to cause you to have to have it. If he does, that's okay. It's because we need it. Here, she struggled not having patience, and what did it lead to? Catastrophe. And and some of you today are saying, well, I'm not going to pray for patience because the Lord might put something before me. Listen to me today. If you don't have the patience you need and you act out of of will of the Lord, it's going to be way worse than maybe having to struggle with a little something. Here, the reality of, of faith is that it takes patience. She was told that she would have this child. And sometimes faith is shown in just going about our daily lives, doing what we're supposed to do and when we're supposed to do it. It didn't take any great act on Abraham and Sarah's part. To have this child. They just had to keep on trusting and going about their daily lives. The Lord may not ask you to go out and do something that, that might be religiously or worldly viewed as huge. It might just be being a godly mother or wife or neighbor. He, he, he might need you just to be who he's created you to be. And do your simple acts. And that's how we live out our faith. And and sometimes our faith is put to the test. But it tells us also that there's the reward of faith. Because it tells us there that, guess what? God holds up his end. He's faithful. It says there that by faith, Sarah did this stuff. She was able to, to have a child when she's 90 years old, which should not only not be humanly possible, but it would have been really, really unlikely for her to survive it. But it says she did all this because, notice those words, she judged him faithful. See, a lot of times we talk about our faith, But here's what we need to be reminded of. We have to trust that God's faithful. That's part of faith. It's trusting in that he will do what he said he'll do. 
that he will be who he said he will be. And it says here that she judged him faithful. And it tells us that they had their son and God had a nation put into the works. Faith sometimes is a tough thing. It's, it's, and you know what? It's really easy to point out the weaknesses of others. It's really easy to look at Abraham and Sarah and see their faults. It's easy to look at these others that we're going to and, and see their faults. But you know what? It's often hard to acknowledge our own struggles and, and that we struggle. On multiple occasions, I've struggled. I, I, I found myself really kind of praying the prayer of, of some words of a struggling parent that Jesus encountered. If you remember the struggling, this, this, this father that was struggling, and it's, it's recorded back in Mark chapter 9, and he's got a, a child that's demon-possessed, and he doesn't know what to do, and he goes to Jesus, and, and Jesus says to him these words, If you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And, and you know what? In a, in a moment of complete transparency and honesty, you know what this father says? He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I, I, I've had to say that before. And, and that's okay for us to, to go to the Lord and just be honest. He already knows what we're thinking. Faith sometimes is hard. And it's easy to try to look at everybody else and say, look at how they're failing, look at what they're not doing. But what we have to do is start to look inside. Back, several years back, there was a, a TV show that, that came on that, that I really enjoyed watching. I, I used to enjoy, I knew many, many other people that did. Caleb, whenever he was little, he used to like to watch it too. And, and because of this show, a lot of people started trying to, to do this thing. And, and, and even Caleb tried to do it much to the, the, the struggle of his mother and myself. It's called Forged in Fire. And, and it's still on today. It's still shown on, on TV sometimes. And I don't know if they're still making new ones or not. But, but it's about these people that would make these things out of metal, typically knives, swords, axes, different things. And, and they didn't just take a piece of metal and cut it out and slap some wood on it, some handles on it, and then here you go, here's your knife. They, they actually took the metal, and they took these, whether it's plates of steel or, or, or ball bearings or all this stuff, and they would heat it up, and they would heat it in a fire. And then you know what they'd do? They'd pound away on it and, and form it out. And then that wasn't good enough. Then, then they would stick it in the fire again after it cooled off and hammer on it and hammer on it. And they kept doing this over and over and over and over again. You know why they did that? Because the more that they worked that metal and the more times that they stuck it in the fire and they brought it out and they stuck it in the fire and they brought it out, it brought more and more strength to that metal. And, and, and that's how our lives are sometimes. Sometimes our lives, we, we want to take the shortcut. We want to do what Sarah did at the start, but the shortcut typically will leave us disappointed and unsatisfied and a lot of times causing a lot more problems than the Lord ever intended. And he says, be patient. And he says, trust in me. And, 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 and maybe you're going through the midst of something and maybe you're in the midst of a trial. You're in the midst of a circumstance. Maybe you're in the midst of this time where you just feel alone and you don't know where to turn. But you know what? It kind of reminds me of another song. Here lately, I've been reminded of a bunch of these old hymns. I don't, I don't always know, understand the whys in life. And sometimes people come to me and think I can solve and answer all these questions for them. And the truth is, I, I honestly don't a lot of times. I can lean on personal experience and why I've been through things and why I think the Lord has brought me through different things. But there's an old song, old hymn, that says, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. 
That, that's what faith is. We don't have to understand all the whys. We don't even have to always understand the outcome. But we do have to trust the one who created us, the one who's offered deliverance through his son Jesus Christ, and who's prepared a place for us. He's made the way. And you know what? Sarah's faith, while it was diminished at times, it didn't disappear. It, it didn't completely go away. And, and oftentimes, we might feel that way. We might feel like, you know what, my, my faith is getting weak. But I want to encourage you today that the struggle, if we'll allow it, can bring us strength. We have to put our faith and our trust in Him. This this lady that only we've heard stories about from tens of thousands of years ago is a great example to us, not of somebody that lived a perfect life. Today, if you're a parent out here, you've not made all the right decisions. None of us have. And no one else for that matter. We have failed and we have fallen short. But listen, the Lord, in spite of all that, still loves us and cares for us, and he's given this great promise to us. This promise that we don't deserve. This promise that we can't earn. This place that's called heaven. The, the scripture that, that I referred to earlier where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right before it, Jesus is describing it. He says that he's went to prepare a place for us. That's, that's what he has done. He has went and he has constructed a home in heaven that's there and it's got your nameplate on the door and it's waiting for you. But you have to make that decision. You have to make that decision of faith that in spite of what Satan throws our way, that we're going to trust and we're going to lean on him. Have you done that today? Are you allowing the struggles of this life to give you strength or are you allowing it to, to take away your strength? Today, you have to trust. You have to trust Him completely. As we rise to our feet, as they lead us in this song of invitation. Listen, I don't know about tomorrow. But I do know who holds my hand. Today, can you leave here with that same conviction, with that same boldness today? If not, you can make that decision today. As we sing, you respond as the Holy Spirit speaks.